Okay, welcome to this video. I'm uh, going over today how to uh, determine if a PPO plan is appropriate for your office, if you should add them in, or if you're evaluating ones you're currently on, just to see which ones uh, would be good for your practice and which ones maybe not so much. Uh, there is no right or wrong answer to this question. Should you be in network or out of network? Should you accept PPO plans or just strictly be a fee-for-service office? I've seen multiple offices do it either way, and I've seen successes and failures on both of them. So there is no unfortunate one final answer on how this can, uh, how it should work. It's just a matter of if you choose one path, how can you make it work? So in today's presentation, we're going to go over how at least I determined how to, uh, I was going to incorporate PPOs into my office. See, when I opened up my practice many years ago, I was uh, on Delta Dental. And for the longest time, that's the only thing that I accepted. And then as the years went by and the demographics in our area kind of changed, um, I decided I was going to add some more PPOs. Plus, it added to what my overall plan going forward uh, with the practice uh, was going to need. Um, having uh, Being an in-network provider seemed to make sense. But there was a a bunch of different plans out there and so trying to determine how uh, how do I sort them out how do I know which one see most dentists that I've noticed and even with myself I would look at uh, like some of the top procedures I look at like a profi a crown and a filling and kind of look at those three things and see well what do those fees look like and how does that compare to my UCR at least my office fees and try to just base it upon that very limited knowledge so instead what I did is I looked at multiple procedures and I looked at how much our office does in these different procedures and then if I was signed up for the plan what would be kind of the effect uh, of that. So what you're going to see on the screen is a series of uh, or it's a spreadsheet you're going to see it being built out as I proceed through this presentation. So let's go to the spreadsheet and just kind of work this through and you can kind of come up with your own decision on how you want to proceed. But let's look at just a list of various dental procedures here you can see, let me go ahead and make this bigger. Okay. Um, I'm just going to scroll down. You can see all the different things with exams, to panos, profis, fillings, crowns of various types, veneer, root canal, gingivectomy, scaling and root planning, pontics, extractions, ortho, uh, all these different things, night guards. You can see I have listed here about 40 something different procedures. Uh, along with those procedure codes and the actual procedure name, I put down, and this is data from many years ago, uh, how many our office did during a 12-month period. Because that tells me how many we actually do. For example, I wouldn't be concerned with uh, how much a PPO plan would pay, say, for a denture when I only maybe did four dentures during the course of the year. But if I did, you know, link in this case right here, almost 4,000 periodic exams, now that starts to be, uh, that's, it has a much heavier weight to uh, this plan and what I might be considering. So once you have listed out your practice, you go back and get your practice numbers and, and figure out how your service mix of what you're doing. Because, you know, for example, some patients or sorry, some dentists, they do their own root canals and some of them refer them out. Some do extractions and some refer them out. You know, there's, so there's, um, there's a mix that everybody has. So first of all, put together this spreadsheet, which by the way, this spreadsheet will be available for download as part of this program or as part of Pivot Dental Company's download section of their website. Uh, but put down the quantity of these different procedures. Next, you're going to go ahead and plug in your fee. Again, these are fees from many years ago, almost 10 years ago actually. And I said, let's for example take a look at periodic exams. Let me zoom in on that one. Pretty simple math. We take the $45, multiply times 3,993, and we get 179,685. That means if all of the patients that came in that year, that 12-month period of time, um, if I did that many exams and if the fee was $45,000, that's how much we would have made in that one particular uh, procedure code. And as you can see, we go through all these ones and multiply them out quantity by the number of uh, dollars per procedure. And you get this number down at the bottom. So right here, it's $2.8 million. Now, we didn't do $2.8 because I didn't include every single procedure on this spreadsheet. But what I did do is put down the, the top 40-something procedures, and now I can see I have this number 2.8. Now that's an arbitrary number that I'm going to use to measure against any other PPO plans. So let's go to this. Let me zoom in. And now let's do this. Let's take a look at Delta, a pretty popular insurance plan. We'll take a look at what, say for example, we charge for periodic 45. Delta is 33. 
And I also have, well, how much percent off is that from my UCR, my office fees? And then I can multiply that out. What if we did 3,993 periodic exams and every single patient was a Delta patient? We accepted the $33 as that payment. We now see it'd be $131,000 uh, as opposed to 179. So you can see there's a difference there. But then you can go down the list and apply the quantity of all the different procedures and multiply that out. If every single patient or all the procedures you did during that 12-month period, if they were all Delta, no fee-for-service, just Delta, well, what would that look like? So if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see that 2.8 million, if it was all fee-for-service, being just as busy you know, as we really were, if all the patients came in and we were just as busy and they were no fee-for-service but all Delta, it would be 2.2 million. Okay, well that just kind of gives us some idea of where this could be going. Let's now add in another insurance plan. We'll just call this Insurance One. The reason why I'm doing this is because Delta at that time seemed to be kind of the gold standard, a quarter of the kind of the thing that most every dentist who was going to consider doing a PPO plan would be part of. I don't know if that's still true today, but about 10 years ago that was the case. And you'll see now I've got these different colors mixed in here. Let me skip down here to the bottom and I'll tell you what those colors mean. If the cell number that we multiply out, sorry, let me go back up to the top. Again, let's go with a periodic. I charge 45, Delta's 33, and let's just say I'm considering adding this other PPO plan. This other plan is 38. Well, they're actually better than Delta, and so they're gonna be blue. Uh, it's actually a negative 15%. They're actually 15% better than the Delta fee. I guess if you could, you wanted to, you could uh, compare it against your own fee, but um, I'm just, just using it as a compared to Delta to see if it's better than Delta or worse than Delta. Just kind of give me some kind of idea which way this could be leaning. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back down to the bottom. If they're better than Delta, it's going to be blue. So if it's $1 more, it's going to turn to a blue cell on this spreadsheet. If they're 10% to 20% less than Delta, it's going to be this yellow color. If it's 21% to 30% worse than Delta, it's gonna be orange. And if it's greater than 30% difference fee from Delta, it's gonna be red, okay? So now I can look at this and you can go line by line to take a look at each one of these. And when you plug in your own uh, spreadsheet like this, you can, uh, you can see for yourself. And so just by quick visual inspection, you can see that this insurance plan is better than Delta on several fees. That's very close, that's what the white is. The white is gonna be within 10%. Uh, zero to 10% off of what Delta would charge. And they have a couple of things here that are not as good as Delta. Let's take it one step further. What if we added, um, hold on a second. Well, let's see this. What if we added several different insurance plans? Let me make that smaller. Oh, sorry, this is kind of a slow computer. There we go. I can now scroll across and I can see visually, let's just say this insurance, I label it insurance plan number six. I can scroll down this one and see, gosh, there's a lot of orange, there's a lot of red. There's only a couple of blues that kind of stand out. Um, so this one actually looks pretty bad, we'll say, compared to Delta. If we go over further, uh, you can see, I'm sorry, going the other way. You got some yellows, you got some blues. This one's kind of a good mix compared to, again, Delta. You could compare it to your UCR fees if you like. You go over here and take a look at this and just kind of get an idea for the color scheme of insurance plan number seven, we'll call it. Uh, how that works. Now, it's nice to have this visual representation of colors, but let's go down to the very bottom. Let's look at some real numbers. When you add it all up, how does this pan out? Again, doing all those procedures for 12 months, 2.88 was what it was all fee for service. 2.2 was what it would be if all those procedures were all Delta. What if all these patients came in and there were this insurance plan? That'd be 2.212. It's, it's very similar to Delta. So if you're happy, let's just say with Delta, then this plan here would be very similar. So it means that at the end of the year, that'd be just as good as the Delta plan. If you just had looked at a couple different procedures, you know, let's just say you looked at, for whatever reason, a provisional crown, which I don't know why that's in there. We need to change that. But, um, you know, if you looked at an ortho and you and they have no coverage and you say, oh, well, that's a terrible plan. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want that one. Um, but if you went to some of these other ones, and you just looked at a couple things, you may have a distorted view. That's why looking at the entirety of, well, I should not say the entirety, but at least 47 procedures, that's quite a few procedures to be looking at for your product mix. But now you can go across and say, this one's 2.8 was ours, 2.2 was Delta, 2.2 was this other plan, 1.9 was another one, 
1.6 was another plan, 1.9, 1.9. You see, you kind of get the idea. You could start ranking these and get an idea of which PPO plans would be um, most advantageous for your practice and which ones would be pretty bad. I know the other part of the equation is, is the quantity, like how many people in your area are on a particular plan. If they're all on MetLife or Blue Cross or Aetna or whatever it might be, and you're not in that plan, but it pays really bad, at least now you're making a more educated decision on which way you're going. You're, you're going to go ahead and choose to not see those patients and be not as busy, but hopefully be more profitable. But if you're sitting around with a bunch of empty chairs and there's nothing going on, then it may not just be a matter of being in network or not. It could be some other factors. But if you start looking at insurance plans, you can at least get an idea from here. Uh, by doing this, you kind of start adding this data to your decision-making process. So when you decide to make your decision, at least you're making it with some more data. So um, hopefully this has been informative and instructional. I know it really helped me when I was trying to rank out these different insurance plans. Ultimately, it's gonna come down to a philosophical question. Do you even think you should be in network or not? Um, and do you think it's gonna have some kind of financial impact on your practice or at least the way you wanna practice? So um, I'd like to hear your comments on this. You can always comment below or on our website about this plan. If you have any questions, of course, I'm always available. Uh, just reach me um, through the website and I look forward to talking to you guys some more. All right, thanks.